So one thing to keep in mind to me is the reason we haven't seen life to me is that the universe has been around for more than 13 billion years. Um, And if you counted the amount of time Earth has been alive, it would be 12 minutes. If you condense the whole life of the universe into a year, uh, Earth will have been alive for 12 minutes before midnight on December, on the end of that year, December 31st. So that's how little of the universe time we've been alive. Meaning that like, Someone could have developed at our same rate, but billions of years before us, you know, they could have gone way past us. And this is just talking about the Fermi paradox, which I think we've talked about before. But um, the, the, one of the first the, the reason the Fermi paradox came about is because someone asked at some point, where is everybody? Where where why aren't there aliens everywhere? The, the universe has been around for so long, as far as we know. First one is habitability. Is there the first reason is habitability? Has, is there a reason? Maybe we're in the only place that you can really live. I think that's bongus, but that is one idea. Um, Wait, as far as we know, there are trillions of planets. Yes. So that was something that I had also myself researched. We thought that it was extremely unlikely that there was another planet in this Goldilocks zone <clears throat> that mm-hmm. we were close enough to a sun that could melt water, but not so close that it would evaporate the water. Cause we assume that life, um, r- requires water. Right. And we thought and, that, and so if, and we thought that those planets were very, very rare. We have apparently since come to understand that it is a lot less frequently rare. And I also, this was another thing that I really wanted to touch on. And that I hope, I'd hope that you would touch on is the, what we can perceive and understand for the scale of not simply our own galaxy, but the universe is absolutely bonkers. Like even if it's rare that our planet is the only planet that lies in this Goldilocks zone, which isn't true. It's actually fairly common. There are billions in billions and billions of stars that host planets that are absolutely capable of hosting life. And to think that our planet is the only planet that evolved life, intelligent life, maybe, you know, that too, we can get that in the debate is incredibly arrogant. Yeah, no, I agree. So that's the first one. That's just the number one where we say there's no habitability, if that's the right way to say it. Um, But yeah, I agree with you, Cheek. Statistically, I think there was something that said something about the Milky Way galaxy. If you just looked at that alone, because that's the only that's the only span that we can really accurately inspect at this point. Um, And if you look at that and you say that it's something like 0.1% of the planets in the sweet zones actually have the water and atmosphere to hold what we're talking about. And then on top of that 0.1 is the likelihood that one of those could hold us. It's still like over a billion planets or something like that. Right. It's Um, bananas. It's just, it's, it's incomprehensibly large. Um, so just statistically it would be super, super, um, I don't know, egotistic to assume that we're the only, at least life, but that, so that doesn't necessarily explain why. So habitability is the first threshold, but just being habitable doesn't mean that you're a human or an intelligible, intelligible life form. Um, the next one would be, how is it possible that life came from nothing? That's the next big question. Like, where did our life come from? How did you smash rocks and lava together until something that could create Bluetooth came about? Um, <laughs> how does that? A Blackberry. Bluetooth yeah, is Blackberry. an awful example. Bluetooth is the only technology that's been around for 15 years that hasn't gotten any better. Fucking bullshit Bluetooth. I'll tell you. True. I'm sorry, Chief. I didn't mean to use Bluetooth. Um, sorry. I hate Bluetooth. 5G. 5G. Um, 
but that's that's another one. It's like how, where, where do we come from? And the I looked at I looked into that one because that one that's the one that troubles me the most. Is like so either answer one something extremely God. random happened, yeah, God, and I think that would eliminate other forms of life. I think that prove if there's a God, I think that's an advocate for simulation theory. Um, but it's either that or something really random happened and some random atoms bashed together and made a single cell organism that is also an advocate for being that that would also filter us to be maybe one of the only life forms but the one that i think is more likely that still doesn't explain much is that we came from a meteor that had some kind of organism on it hit our planet or another planet that hit our planet it was the one or two single soul organisms that landed and kind of developed with the earth but that would mean it came from somewhere else and where did that come from i don't know slippery slope um the next one is what's that chicken or the egg chicken or the egg egg um (laughs) oh chicken Oh. Um, the other one, the third one out of seven, just so you know, uh, there's more, but I, I narrowed it down to my favorite life on other places doesn't have the technology. So they're like us. Um, the question is, I mean, if they don't have the same technology, they could be trillions of light years away in, tr- in one of the infinite numbers of planets. So we, even though we've been sending out signals and they might've been sending out signals, it just might not. It's very possible that it didn't cross. Not to mention, like I said, we're 12 minutes before midnight in the life of the universe. Um, they could have existed at any different time. Um, the other, the next one is maybe they explored a time way before us, or they developed technology to sense that we're here, or anything like that, and they don't want to be found. And maybe their technological advancements didn't lead them to being like, oh, we want to go find other planets we want to rather build technology that harnesses 100 percent of the power coming from our sun creates a supercomputer where we can upload our minds and we can live billions on billions on billions on billions on billions of lives in a matter of seconds um and never have to worry about that kind of thing ever again Fuck is that theory? yeah that that's that's a very popular theory because um that's that's along the lines of the simulation theory, but like a lot of people say that like what if we because we think that going off our physics, we think you can't travel the speed of light um faster than the speed of light. And even if you could travel the speed of light, it would take you like a million years to get out of just our Milky Way galaxy. And so maybe that becomes an unachievable dream. And instead you want to harness all the power of your sun and do everything that we don't know the bounds of technology. And so you want to do everything the bounds of technology can handle. And so basically what the theory is there is that you create solar panels that surround the, th- the sun. This is super sci-fi um, and create a super quantum computer. Listen to episode one in one part two. Um, and you create a quantum computer that allows you to like, we're all moving towards kind of like cyber uploading our brains anyways at this point to have this like Sims type, but ultra realistic universe where time passes in an instant in our real time, but in relativity, you're living lifetimes, you have kids in lifetimes, you get to move on. It's, it's this whole preservation of your brain and unification of society. It's far fetched, but also a plausibility. Maybe their goals, it, the sum basically what I'm saying is maybe that civilization's goals isn't to reach you the same way you do. And maybe that's where they are. They have advanced past this super awesome barrier of technology, but they didn't choose to come look for you. Um, The next one is great filters. Maybe there are great filters in life that either we have passed or haven't gotten to yet that eliminate life as we know it. So like maybe the meteors, maybe every life evolution, no matter where you are, has a meteor hit, has uh, the convergence of like, because the moon is made from um another planet hitting us and then them splitting off maybe every planet has that and maybe it's statistically unlikely that you make it through that and we are just the outliers um or maybe there's some kind of technological barrier that all of a sudden every civilization creates technology to the point where it destroys them um that kind of thing maybe that's another great filter the other one is 
along with the first one, maybe there's no other life. I don't buy into that one. I won't give that one much light of the day. Um, and then the other one is maybe we're squirrels in a forest. Maybe we're, um, this is the last one. Maybe we're, we and other life civilizations are just squirrels in the forest. And there is a. Talked about this last season. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and there's other civilizations out there that are going and harvesting just like we do from the rainforest. They're out there just harvesting materials from other planets and they recognize there's life everywhere because they're super advanced, but they're saying, Oh, look at these cute little squirrels in the forest and eh, mow down the trees. And then later like, Oh, maybe that affected those humans and now they're dead. But, um, they're not here for us. They're here for our resources. They drain our oceans to easily access what's below them and things like that. So that's the scariest one to me, but that's also to me what's most likely because if anything was going to colonize us, it's probably this like self replicating army of robots that comes and autonomously collects all our shit because you can't send humans that far into time. Like, so I'm assuming there's a lot of life that can't make it that long. So I don't know. That's a long winded way to say, what science thinks about UFOs. Um, 